Hi, I'm Melissa Coates. Today I want to talk about the Power BI Administrator role and how you go about managing who is an administrator. As with many aspects of administration and governance, this involves having a balance between people being able to get things done and the risk of when too many people have elevated permissions. In this video, we're going to talk about four things. First, we'll cover two ways we can manage membership in the Power BI Administrator role, including a new feature that just got released in August 2020. Then we'll talk about how to delegate who manages your Power BI Administrators, which can be helpful for companies where Power BI is not managed within central IT. Then we'll correlate that with groups you might need to manage Power BI effectively. And finally, how to reduce the number of full-time administrators which are assigned without giving up the ability for people to get things done. Let's start with what I mean by the Power BI Administrator role. This is a built-in role in Microsoft 365. Both your global administrators and the specific Power BI Administrator role include people who have the ability to manage the Power BI service. In the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, we can view the Power BI Admin role under the Roles area. What we've been doing all along to manage Power BI administrators is to assign individuals to the role. Previously, only individuals could be directly added to the role rather than groups. But what if we also want to use a Power BI administrator group? We could find that useful for several reasons. The tenant settings themselves require group assignments. There's also managing workspace access itself. For instance, perhaps you have a set of reports related to the Power BI activity log data. Finally, you may also have automation jobs or alerting. So I need a role and I have uses for a group. What I want to avoid is maintaining the role membership and the group membership separately. I don't like the double maintenance, nor do I like the risk if and when they get out of sync. A new feature released to preview August 2020 allows us to assign a role to a group. This allows us to use a group like our Power BI administrators and assign a built-in role to it. Then members are assigned to the group and not directly to the role. Here in Azure Active Directory, I have a Power BI administrators security group configured. Notice this column on the far right that says role assignments allowed is yes. Under Assigned Roles, I have assigned the Power BI Administrator built-in role to this group. This is possible because when I created the group, I allowed an Azure AD role to be assigned, and we can see this under Properties. The biggest benefit to this approach are that we've aligned the role in the group. This reduces maintenance and risk of inconsistencies. Secondly, it allows us to delegate management of who is a member of the Power BI Administrator role. Let's say Power BI Administration is handled by a BI team or a center of excellence, which is not part of central IT. Since we can assign a group owner for the group, for instance, someone from the BI or COE team, we can now effectively delegate administration of the role to them. This takes the load off of your global administrator or your privileged authentication administrator. Back in Azure AD, on the owners page, I can see that I've assigned Griffin as the owner of the group, so management of the group and the role membership is delegated to him. Since this is a new feature, we do need to call out some things you need to know about. As of when I'm recording this, it is in public preview. It currently works for cloud groups and built-in roles only. On-premises groups and custom roles are not yet supported, though they will be, so check when you are watching this later. You will need to create a brand new cloud group to make this work. There's no nesting of group memberships. It requires an Azure AD Premium P1 license, and it does not work with a mail-enabled security group. This last item is really important, as we're about to see. There are a few types of groups you're likely to have when managing Power BI, excluding the groups needed in the tenant settings to grant or deny access to specific features. The top one listed is the group we've been discussing, which aligns to the built-in administrator role. The second one relates to things 
we need for when we want to be alerted. Specifically, the tenant setting about incidents and alerts requires a mail-enabled security group. So the trade-off that I'm proposing is that we centralize as much as we can into the main Power BI administrator group and maintain a second group related to notification or alerting needs. You might be able to consolidate some or all of the last three groups which are listed depending on how much flexibility you want in managing your groups. Let's return for a moment to the original question. Who is allowed to be an administrator? If you're in a highly decentralized organization, keeping this number low can be a challenge. There's no reader role for the Power BI administrator, which means a highly capable Power BI champion or power user within an individual department cannot check what the tenant settings currently look like. This is why I always suggest that tenant settings are documented for the broader Power BI community to refer to, including what group to request access to to perform certain capabilities. But let's say you have a legitimate need for someone to have Power BI administrative access temporarily. They just don't need to permanently be a Power BI administrator. This is where a feature of Azure AD called Privileged Identity Management, or PIM, comes in. How it works. The Azure AD administrator sets up the relevant roles and eligible members. Our eligible member requests to activate the membership in the Power BI administrator group. Optionally, approval for this can be required, or if you don't want the delay of waiting for approval, the changes will all still be logged. Our eligible member becomes a regular member of the role and could proceed with whatever needs to get done. At the end of the expiration time, our member is removed from the role and is reverted back to an eligible member. Under Members in Azure AD, note that I have three members of my Power BI Administrators group, the one that's aligned with the role. These are my full-time administrators. If I switch over to my PIM resource and go to Privileged Access Groups, I see my Power BI Administrators group. Under Assignments, I see my same three members under Active Assignments. If I switch to Eligible Assignments, I see someone new. So if I change to a window where I'm logged in as Scotty, I'm going to go to the PIM resource. If I choose Privileged Access Groups, under Eligible Assignments, I have the Power BI Administrators group. If I go to Active Assignments, there's currently nothing active. That's because he's currently still considered eligible. So if I choose to activate this, and let's say I only need three hours, and maybe my reason is that I need to update the tenant setting related to who can push apps. That's what Scotty needs to do, why he's asking for this to be activated. Now, the way I have it configured, it does require approval. That's not a necessary step, but you can do that. So my approver has received an email that says, I need to approve or deny this particular request. We see who it is, we see the reason that Scotty put in, and I can go ahead and approve it or deny it from here. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that and say Approve. And at this point, if we go back to the window where Scotty is logged in, and if I go to Active Assignments, Scotty's membership in the Power BI Administrators group is now activated until 8.42 p.m. So at this point, Scotty could go and proceed to do what he needs to do over in the Power BI service. This is a nice workflow because it removes the risk of having too many people with permanent full-time elevated permissions. It lessens the need to create a secondary admin account that you log in with when you need those elevated permissions. Now, do keep in mind that using PIM is not convenient for people who are your full-time administrators, especially if you use the same Power BI admin group tied to the role for your regular workspace security.
Regardless of which way you manage your Power BI administrator role, like we talked about at the beginning, assigning users directly, or using the new group membership which aligns with the role, you can use PIM. I hope you found all of this helpful, and thanks for watching.